These countertops were refinished using epoxy. We used techniques to make these old concrete countertops come back to life. Using simple tools and techniques, you can save thousands by refinishing your old surfaces. Our customers, the Martins, and now our friends, they live in Hawaii. They challenge us to come save and salvage their countertops, and we accepted. We worked hard and we played hard. We had a blast creating these countertops. We teamed with Gecko, a local contractor. We showed him our recipes, our techniques, and in this video, we're gonna show you every step to salvage your countertop, renew your old surfaces, and bring your spaces back to life. Simple steps take your project from concept to complete. We started with the sample, then we prepped the countertops by sanding and cleaning. We transferred the knowledge from our sample and applied it to their full-scale countertop project. It was fun adding veins and moving color. Our customers wanted countertops to define their space. They chose their color palette and we went to work, moving color and making these countertops pop. By torching the surface, you remove any excess bubbles to create a very uniform finish that lays out like glass. Don't miss a step. We teach drip removal and how to prep. We're gonna go over every aspect of this project and how to customize it to any space. The Martins wanted a turtle incorporated into their countertops and we delivered. We show how to apply a clear coat and chop the surface to be sure that your epoxy project is a success. We show you how simple it is to trial your product out so that everything lays out perfectly. We're also gonna show you that in between coats, you have time to play. We found new Ohana on the big island and in this video, we're gonna show you how Gecko learned how to do epoxy and you can too. You can redefine your space in a weekend, you can change your kitchen and in this video, you're gonna learn why heat resistance, scratch resistance, zero VOC, eco-friendly, do-it-yourself epoxy can change your home. You can find all the products used in this project at StoneCoatCountertops.com. Stay tuned and enjoy the video. Aloha. You got this. Remember, when you subscribe to our channel, click on the red subscribe button and be sure to ring the bell so you get notified every time we have a new video. Thanks again. Welcome to Stone Coat Tropical Edition. We're here in Hawaii and we're about to meet Dr. Bob. Let's get started. Okay guys, we're about to go over these old concrete countertops. The sealer is old, it's worn, the heat rings are showing, and we're gonna make this thing pop and come back to life. The first step is to prep this kitchen. It's all in the prep. First, we're gonna take our blue painter's tape to protect the cabinets with a perimeter outline of that blue tape. After that, we're gonna use our white tape to adhere three mil plastic. Then we're gonna do the floors and make sure everything is spick and span. We have a clean area that will be clutter free when we're doing our project. The first video I ran in two of yours, uh -huh. I was like, what the heck? <laughs> Bunch of wackos, man. <laughs> I kept watching and then when you, know, you lit up the torch and started making things you know, happen, I was like, oh. Oh, we met a guy at Home Depot uh -huh. and he wanted us to do his project. I was like, listen, we don't live here, but we're teaching Gecko exactly what we do. So right. yeah, we'll get you, we'll get you going, man. I go blue tape, and then I'm gonna use the white and the three mil plastic that's only the three foot stuff, uh -huh. because if it comes down and you're walking on it, you're gonna step and it's gonna peel it oh, from here. It's gonna you ever see any sharks when you're out there swimming? I have. Nice. Hey guys, pro tip. Right here where the drawer was inhibiting us from getting the blue tape to follow this profile nice and tight, you can remove the drawer and you can tape it really tight right here so you don't have that epoxy. Find a little leak behind that tape and run down this cabinet. Prep is key. Prior planning prevents poor performance. There's silicone right here, so I have to scrape that off with my razor blade before I mask this off because that silicone, will, it'll repel the epoxy. 
you can feel like this is a cove, right? Like it's popped oh, out. Yeah. It'll go right down in that hole and come down their wall. Okay. Yeah, see, see the void you have in there? Oh yeah. That will destroy you. We're in Hawaii putting up plastic, dude. <laughs> Let's mask it. All right, when you prep your kitchen, your bathroom, or any space that you're gonna epoxy, take your time. All that time is an investment that you guarantee you won't get leaks or messes in the end. It makes clean up a breeze, take your time, and prep it right. What did they weld on that, Gecko? Yeah, instead of the little snap connectors like that, what they brazed them on. Oh, I mean, so we couldn't take out the faucet, so it's welded in, so we'll mask it off. But uh, those are pretty universal base plates, so if you do need to change that, you can score that or you can use a multi-tool and cut that and then okay. pop it off. Okay. All right, we came to Hawaii today. Gecko, it was awesome meeting you, bro. Yeah. Yes, we, we got this prepped. We got it masked off. We got some pictures to give us inspiration to create samples. You got some sample boards already cut. I do. Yeah, are I'm you excited? Oh yeah, I am. All right, we're gonna match this color. We're gonna do our seal coat tomorrow. We're gonna rub it, rub it up early in the morning. Let's do it, man. All right, we got some trivets here. This is for hot pans. It was built into this concrete countertop, and you can see they're just a little grungy. They've got some buildup on them over time. We're gonna sand these. It'll bring them back to life. It'll look brand new, and there's nothing better than polished metal with epoxy. I'm gonna make a dam right here, this overhang. I need to catch the drip so they don't go onto our bottom counter, because this will follow and then drip and create a noticeable effect as this cures. So we're gonna be able to pour these all at once by creating a temporary dam that we pull before that hardens up. We're not gonna let you wipe out. At StoneCoatCountertops.com, we have many project recipes showing you step by step how to finish your epoxy project. You're gonna see exactly how to do this project and many more. We'll see you at StoneCoatCountertops.com. This edge right here is a little bit chiggered up. What we're gonna do is we're gonna sand that so that when we epoxy it, it's gonna look brand new. You wouldn't wanna leave it rough underneath this edge. All right, we need to create a bond with these concrete countertops and our epoxy. In this case, we're gonna create a mechanical bond using a rough sanding block. This is 36 grit. We're gonna just rough this up so that that epoxy will really bite into those pores and create a very good tenacious bond. When you're working with concrete, wood, or anything porous, be sure to sand and seal coat that process first. You want to use one ounce per square foot, you're going to use a squeegee to spread it, and you're going to make that substrate non-porous. Pro tip, if you have wax on a concrete countertop, remove that before doing this process. You don't want wax on the surface, it will repel that epoxy. Do you have a chop saw? Like if we cut an angle on a couple of pieces of wood, I could tape those underneath this as ribs. Yeah, well, I got a bunch of popsicle sticks. That would work, man. Yeah. We're in Hawaii. We're going to make a ribbed trough boat inspired by canoes. <laughs> See, I'm thinking something like that. I'll put two ribs in each piece. That works, man. Man, those look good, bro. Thank you. That's a lot of work just getting those cleaned off, but you did perfect. There we go, man. Got that thing all guttered up. Mitch is sanding with uh, 36 grit. Just getting this thing roughed up. Luke's doing it. Gecko's after it. We're almost ready to do a seal coat. And I'm not doing anything. <laughs> Another pro tip, you've noticed that we've masked off before we started any dust in the house. If I started sanding before we prepped, now we're cleaning the dust off the cabinets and the floor, but because we did it in the right order, we masked the floor, masked the cabinets, we can create the dust and scoop it right onto the floor. When we're done, we roll that all into a big dusty burrito, and we're ready to hit the beach. Yeah, Mike, have you ever worked with an integrated drain board? Um, I haven't poured epoxy over a drain board before. You would have two options here. Because this is out of level going towards the sink, you could fill that in to flush it out with the current countertop, or you can accentuate it. You want to use this to your advantage, so we'll make our effects going downhill, so they're going to flow anyways. We're going to make this drain board look like it was meant to be. After sanding, you're gonna have a dusty surface. We're gonna wipe that with acetone and we'll be ready for the next step. 
The reason I like using acetone is because it flashes off fast. It's not gonna saturate the concrete and create moisture problems with my epoxy. Another good reason to use acetone, it's a VOC free product. Yeah, look at that dust. So we'll do an initial wipe and then we'll come back and do a final wipe. I would not want to pour this concrete top, man. Oh, you know how much work it would have been just to build the form? Not easy. There's always pluses and minuses to doing stuff on site versus off site. But think about how much work it would be to pre build these all out at MDF. Oh. I mean, you're talking tear out, yeah. you're talking the radiuses, you're talking the template, uh, the shut. Like, it, it, this is the right one to go over the existing surface, you know? This is kind of throw this in for a little twist. Yeah. What we're going to do, you know, what we. Yeah. Yeah, you know, try to find some rock like that. Exactly. Yeah. 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 <laughs> exactly. And I'll tell you, Gecko, there's never been a customer that gave us a picture with inspiration that we weren't able to make a counter look like that. It's infinite choice, you know? Maybe not infinite, just like over a million, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Well, it doesn't look like we've done much at this point. <laughs> it kind of looks like it did when we got here. So uh, maybe we'll get some work done today. That looks good. All right, Bob, we're almost ready, man. To get this torn out and put new counters in would have been not only a feat, but a lot of money. Like oh, it, it would have been. What it was. I had guys in here. What'd they quote you? Well, it goes anywhere between 30,000 and 50,000. That's that's with demolition. We're going to come in and demo it. That'll be 10 grand just to pull it out. Oh my gosh. So I've been just sitting here wondering what, what am I going to do? What wow. a nightmare, right? Right. Mitch said he's heard you on the radio. The Dr. Bob Martin show. I think I've heard that's on it, on our radio. local. Yes. That's crazy, man. Where, where's your studio from here? It's right behind you. It's in, it's in that room right over there. Oh. Can we check yeah, it out? Yeah, come on. Oh, let's, uh, yes, man. You do this from home and you're oh, yeah. nationwide. Yeah. Holy cow. This is where you do 180 stations. Yeah, AM, FM stations and worldwide. We, we stream live over the internet too, worldwide. It's like I got people listening in Cuba. So communist country. from home with a duct tape microphone. That's right. You are, you are. I'm a MacGyver guy. Just I like love you guys, it, man. man. I love it. This is incredible, man. He, is this you with Ronald yeah, Reagan? It is. It is. Oh my gosh. I like the hair, Bob. Yeah. I like the hair. He's, he's with Ronald Reagan right there, man. That's cool. All right, Gecko, you ready? Yes. So this is a good, uh, good point of how we, how we set up on site. So we get everything nice and clean in our work area. Then we have some tool tables over here. And you can see how organized everything is. The more organized you are, the less that you're looking for things when you really need it while you're doing your job. Because we're going to use black and gold in the actual project, why don't we just tint it with a little bit of base tint? How many um, square feet is this counter? No. This is 49 square feet for yeah. for this part? Yes. And that's 10 square feet? Yes. We're gonna mix one ounce per square foot. We're gonna do part B first and then part A and we'll mix it for about two minutes using your drill and that new paddle. And we're gonna squeegee it on and use our gloved hands to rub it on the edges. So when I put it in, I don't jam it to the bottom of the bucket. I'll put it down and then just lift it up off the bottom a little bit. I hold the bucket so I don't spin it. I start out slow and then I go fast. Now I know I'm mixed, I'm gonna add some black and we're gonna tint this black to give us a really nice underpainting. You can see a little is very concentrated, you know? Tell me about it. So the reason I started on the top gecko was because any extra, I could just scoop it down into my other counter. Just enough to wet it out. That's all we're doing here. And I'm not gonna push it over that edge. Just set it up for it. Just like that. I'm actually gonna use my hand okay. and just work those edges. I think you just do this because it's fun. It definitely doesn't hurt. <laughs> <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta love what you do, right? So we'll get most of it off and then we'll just rub it by hand. We're going down in here too, yeah? Oh yeah, yeah, I'll just scoop a lot of that in there. And we'll kind of let this self level. So let's just scoop all of our excess in there. I'm gonna put these on a counter we've already done and then just use our hands just to erase any of like the, where you can obviously see it was stopped with a trowel or something like that. Now this looks good just as is. All right, we're done. <laughs> 
So you can see right here how porous that concrete is because you can see it really sitting in those deep parts. That's the real importance of doing a seal coat on concrete. Here's a pro tip. If you have a long reach back here, do that first and work your way out or else your shirt is gonna get buried in epoxy. We're gonna use a little chop brush here and get the cracks of this drain board. Nice and sealed, but not too much epoxy. Our edges are slightly damaged in some areas. I'm gonna pre-fog with black. This is like painting or pre-coloring the base substrate so that when we do the color coat, it's all set up and you can't see through this epoxy into a concrete substrate. We're gonna make it black. This would be a problem area here too because all that epoxy is gonna run down. So I am gonna pre-fog these radiuses slightly. Same with this radius here. I'm gonna pre-fog that. Excellent. I'm gonna wipe the little drips off the bottom side of this sink polish. Pro tip, when you have a big island or you have a far reach, get a propane tank that's tall and skinny, that way you can use it as a handle. When you're done with your squeegee, clean it with acetone or isopropyl alcohol and the squeegee will be ready for your next project. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a couple of the other colors. We're gonna use some white and gold in our base tints, our metallics, as well as spray paints, but we're gonna pre-fog some of these edges and wherever it's not level like that drain board, we're gonna pre-color it slightly so that if that epoxy runs and is thin at all, it's still gonna have color that matches the counter surface. All right, this is champagne bronze, but it looks like the gold that we're looking for, so we're gonna pretend that it's Hawaii gold. That's cool, that's a nice color, dude. That's the same color in the picture. Gecko, you got any questions about what we've done so far or what are your thoughts on this process, man? The seal coat is really thin, I mm -hmm. can see. Yeah, it gives us an opportunity to pre-coat those edges a little bit. It also tells us where our problem areas would be and that would show fish eyes or show bubbling and I don't see any. We really prepped this thing good. The concrete is not sealed with wax or else that would show right now. I mean, we're ready to rock for our next coat. So we're gonna let this set until it's tacky or almost, almost all the way dry. So it'll be a few hours and then we'll come back and do the next coat. Yeah. And then well, first thing we're gonna do is once it, before it gets tacky, we're gonna pull tape. No, we're actually, we don't need to pull tape because there's not a buildup here. We're not like, well, that's why our tape's about an eighth off the deck. Oh. So nothing's holding that tape in where it won't tear. We'll do that after the first flood coat. Okay. Step one, let's make a sample so we can show our homeowner what we're gonna do in their large kitchen. We wouldn't wanna do the whole kitchen and then say, do you like it? What happens if they didn't? So we're gonna do this on a two by two sample. We bought this piece of MDF at Home Depot. Gecko sent us a picture. He showed us what the homeowner likes and it's an amazing piece. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use these particular colors. We're gonna use our black base tint, our white base tint, our black metallic, our gold metallic, our pearl metallic, and we're gonna use champagne bronze in metallic spray paint. Why are we using black base tint and black metallic. Well, they're two different things. And so you get those subtle differences that from afar, you may not see a big difference. They're both black, but when you get up close, that's when the magic happens. So whenever you get a picture, you really got to figure out how do I emulate this the best with epoxy? And really you, you can emulate anything, but it's a matter of how do I get there, right? right. Mm -hmm. The challenge here is that the colors are segregated. And so in order to keep things segregated in epoxy, we're gonna pour them into different clear plastic containers and we're gonna apply those to the board. We're gonna start with the black and the white. We'll pour almost like beads, some skinny, some fatter beads, trace those beads into the shapes that we want and then we'll drag the gold yeah, over the okay. top. The first thing that I'm gonna do, shake these up and we're just gonna add our additives uh, um, beforehand. That way when we pour the clear epoxy, we're not using sticky gummy hands to open our packets. All right, Mike, you ready for me to start mixing up? Yeah, let's mix up enough to do a few of these samples and uh, we'll start getting the additives ready. 24 ounces? Sounds good. All right. We were told that we were supposed to find a, a way to put a turtle in this countertop and I think we figured it out and it's gonna be a surprise. So, so wait till you see how we do it. You like that trick? The bartender. <laughs> there's the pearl, there's the gold, and there's the black. Here's the deal. So when you pull metallics over base tints, you create cells or those artistic, right, right. really beautiful. When you go base tint over metallic, it kind of mutes it out a little bit. Okay. So we're gonna put 
our base tents down first and then we're gonna do it kind of organically. This is where we were gonna kind of push this to create harder lines. And all I'm gonna do now is just break up surface tension in some of this. The brush is in your hand. Oh, I'm loving this, man. Oh yeah. This is gonna be so cool. You can see the power of um, samples. Now I gotta put a little bit of this gold in there. Mrs. Martin, what do you think? Amazing. <laughs> Can I, 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 love, I love these colors together. Dr. Bob, what do you think? It looks good, but maybe less white. Okay, perfect. Less That's what white. we need to know. Mm -hmm. yeah. So cover up just the pure toothpaste white? Yeah. Nice. See, see what it's doing? I see it. And that will, that will grow for me a little bit. Could you imagine, Mitch, how much this would cost a natural stone? Right. And, and I guarantee you that there's natural stone that looks like this. Is this too yellow for you? Yeah, is that what yeah, you're looking yeah, at? that's what I'm looking at. Okay. And not only that, you see the brown is in each, almost in every single little section. But it's okay, like so let me do that. And when you have really nice customers like Bob, you have to know that they're holding back and read their body language. <laughs> yeah, this will help move some of this for me just to make it a little bit more realistic. And you don't want to overdo it, just enough to slightly move the material. This is very, very pretty. What do you think, Bob? Yeah, that looks better. We have the funnest job on earth. And see, because it's in the liquid state, everything that we do will kind of stretch a little bit mm -hmm. because it, it'll, it'll want to move and level out. Yeah, yeah. it looks really good. Yeah. Your work that I saw in the videos was superb. For me to not know that I'm not going to get something superb, it's not even in there. All right. You had faith. You had faith. Oh, it's awesome. nice. That's it? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> that is probably one of my very favorite colors I've ever done, man. I think this piece we did is better. So what I want to do is I want to carry whatever effect we do, carry it right here. So it looks like this was cut out of the same piece. They call it butterflying the pieces. So they'll, they'll take the rock, they'll cut it, and then they'll open it up. And when they butterfly it, on a raised bar like that and they bring the, the next color, that costs buku, crazy amount of money, but it looks outstanding because it, it's the same piece. So that's the same effect I try to do. I'm gonna sand with 220 grit on all the edges and we're still slightly tacky on our surface. So we'll slightly sand it. We don't need much. We'll wipe the dust and we're ready for our flood coat. And after we do this, we're gonna pull that masking on all the upper yeah. stuff, not the lower stuff. Yeah, just... And then we'll remask that tomorrow. Pro tip. Check your masking between coats. You wanna make sure that everything is nice and tight and nothing has come loose from your cabinets or your walls so you don't create a mess. All right, it's time to wipe down after you sand with 91% isopropyl alcohol. I like this. Your guys' common sense approach, run down to Home Depot, go get me that right there. Right. You know, mm -hmm. I can pick it off the shelf and I go, these guys, this ain't no specialty thing and you need to go join mine and you need to come over here and get... No, no. common sense approach is key. Yeah. You know, because internet has made the whole world a community, right? And so if I overcomplicate something, the community is going to be, man, you're overcomplicating this. And so we keep it simple because I don't want you to have to buy a product from me that you can go down to Home Depot and get. Yeah. We keep all the stuff as simple as we possibly can, a paint stick, a rag, a glove, a squirt bottle, you know? Like, if it can be that simple and you get those results, home run, man, home run. <laughs> So the black really kind of determines your pattern because now I'm just filling in the void spots, right? This is a perfect marriage between art and countertops. This is where you take art techniques and you've leveled up your stone and turned your kitchen into a functional work of art. I practiced that last night for seven hours. Man. Oh, this pearl is outstanding. So here's what I'm gonna do, guys. We're gonna use our hand and we're just gonna start forcing this together. Just start bringing the color together and don't clean your hand every time. On the edges of each color, it'll integrate. Is this fun or what? So 
So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start pulling some of this metallic over the base just to create some beautiful effect. We're gonna pull this one across this black. I'm gonna pull this into this white. Like we said yesterday, Gecko, this is so different at scale. It's totally different than just a little sample board. Oh yeah. Time to start adding that highlight now. He loves it in the black. Nice guys, you're definitely keeping the same flavor. Good job. That's the key is if a crew can work together and it looks like the same guy did it. Yep. That's that's money in the bank. Yeah. And then I'm gonna start heat gunning just to make things look right here. That looks sick going over that. See, just those little touches. You wanna grab Dr. Bob and see what they think of this section? Okay, so it's just the color on this section. We wanna see what else you wanna add or take away or what you like or don't like. <laughs> it looks amazing. <laughs> it's, it's, it's such a fun color. Do you like the pattern, how we've kind of changed yeah. it from, yeah. okay, good. Yeah, you can't pick up any kind of uh, symmetry to it. Right. I, I don't know, I like it the way it looks right now. Well, if that's the case, I do too. Oh, it's pretty neat, isn't it? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Unbelievable. I don't want to mess with it, although... That's what they're going to look like. Honey. This right here looks like somebody made a mistake. That schmudge right there. Okay, so right here... Well, I know this is no, 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 no. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull some color and we'll just make that look more natural. So yeah. when we do this, you're going to see things I don't yeah. that are going to bug you. You see how easy it is to just Absolutely. boop, boop, boop. So that's the time to, to fix that yeah. and we'll, uh, we'll keep moving on. So now, because you don't want the trivets to, to stop what was really happening with that stone, so I'm just going to create like a fracture that went through that. How do I clean them? Easy. Just anything that says countertop cleaner. We recommend like uh, just stuff designed for man-made counters or man-made surfaces. Okay. If you want to shine to it, we do sell a polish that um, makes it feel like glass when you're done. You ready to get dirty, Gecko? Oh yeah, I'm loving this. You see how now, because we got our system, it's fast, man. It's, yeah. There's no stress. Man, this is a absolutely gorgeous. I'll start on the island. Pro tip, use your island as your resource. This is the center point of the kitchen. We're gonna clean it up and we're gonna do it last, but we use it as our work table and it worked great. Right. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's perfect. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love this. You know, when you first showed me the tile, I'm going, well, that's plain. You know, okay, we'll do a plain tile. And then you sent this picture, I went, wow, that will be a video. Hey Gecko, look how cool this looks now, man. Where you heat gun, this, the color separates, so even if it looks a little muddy at first, they'll separate slightly to create very realistic effects. And especially with your green. It's just another layer, man. Layers, they're like onions. All right, Gecko, it's been about three hours since we mixed up this side. Go ahead and stick around with us with a gloved hand and wipe the bottom of those, smooth out those drips. And on the island and the peninsula, they're newer, they haven't sat as long, use a paint stick to do that. At a 90 degree angle, just rub that along there, hold in your hand under there to catch the drips. Scrape it all up. Yeah. Gecko, man, we got the color coat down. This is about as complex as it gets. That being said, it's your very first pour with this kind of a thing. Like, what'd you think, man? What'd you learn? Because of the ease of working with the material, uh -huh. it, 
I could see where you could really get the creativeness out of you right. and, mm -hmm. and, and really up the quality of the application. Right. You know? I can't wait tomorrow to come back, do the clear coat, and see the final product. Totally. Great job, man. Great job. Great job. Thank you. Good job, Gecko. All right, good job. All right, we'll, uh, we'll babysit these drips, have some lunch, and I think we're going snorkeling, man. All right. <laughs> so we use two and a half gallons. That's about $220 worth of material <laughs> versus 50 grand. <laughs> and then and then obviously we'll use that much more. So you're about you're about 600 bucks in material plus the uh, plus the plastic. Okay. Where's the best spot to go snorkeling? This whole side right here. Right, guys we removed the blue tape from the backsplash after we finished pouring the color coat today we're gonna reapply that now we didn't remove it off of our dam because it needed to catch the drips as the tops were curing so what I'm doing here is I'm keeping my tape just a little above the actual countertop surface the reason I'm doing that is so I can pull it and it's not gonna drag through that fresh epoxy but this tape is my insurance that when I'm troweling that clear out it doesn't splash up on that backsplash Gecko, my man. Hey, this yeah, came hi. out so awesome. I love. Now you stayed here yesterday and addressed all those drips. Yes. To make sure that they all look good. Yeah. You did great, man. It kind of got like a. It gets like an oily feeling too when it's about ready to set. Sure. Kind of stringy, right? Yeah. Hey, because of you getting those drips, you let us go kayak the ocean. We went. We went snorkeling at that Captain Cook monument. Oh, down in the California. Oh, yes. it was so nice, it man. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you oh, for letting us do yeah, that, thank man. You. So next step, what we're gonna do is sand with 220 on the edges. I like to do the edges first, but all you're gonna do is just give it some tooth, and you can feel that compared to that, how that already smoothed out those high points. Oh yeah. So that's all it takes. Oh. And then just we'll come to the top and just create that mechanical bond again. And then we'll wipe it with 91% isopropyl alcohol, clean it with the rag. I'm gonna work on the splash. We'll meet in the middle. We'll pour the clear. Yeah, let's go. Let's do this. Let's do this. So it's in the, in the or where, oh, it's huge. Let's go out and see it. Oh, wow, man. That's sick. Wow. Is it YTT Diamond Head in my way? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know Diamond Head. I love it, man. Yeah. That's Hawaiian art right there. Like, right. that's what I picture in Hawaiian art. You're the man. You're a true artist when you make your own canvas. And that's what I was kind of talking to you about doing an epoxy seal on some of them, you know? Yeah. Like, Did you see that video where I coated my uh, oil painting? Yes. I got to tell you, yeah. it added so much depth. I mean, it was pretty, I think, like, it was good, but then you put clear over it. Holy cow, I, I was, I love it now, man. If you did clear and tiny, I'm talking tiny amounts of maybe blue in some of the water, just tiny amounts, it would give you that depth on the water. Or maybe you put tiny amounts of like purple mountain there. What, what, like you would get this, you could touch up, you know, you feel me? <laughs> I got a pain. <laughs> yes, <laughs> man. I, you got to send me some pictures, man. A lot of people ask, can I do a bullnose edge? Sure, you can do a bullnose edge. Can I do a OG edge? Can I do a triple pencil edge? Any edge you want to do, really the focal point of the kitchen is the pattern that you do into it, you know. As it, but I really like these big sweeping radiuses. That is outstanding. I wonder, 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 wonder who. Who wrote the book of love? That's going on the video. Yep. We have 
have a Hanu. Mrs. Martin really loves turtles, so we're gonna put a couple of turtles hidden in the countertop using a vinyl decal. I wanna put them somewhere where they don't jump out at you. It'd be a fun game. Hey, find the turtles in the kitchen. So we're gonna put the vinyl decal on the surface and we'll clear coat over that and she'll have her own customized family of turtles. We're going to use our 1 8 by 1 8 square notch trowel. This allows us to get a nice even top coat so everything lays out level and we don't waste any material. It's the perfect tool of choice. Pro tip, when you're chopping out and you don't have the full backsplash covered because we've taken that paper down, be nice and steady so you don't make a mess in the house. Be sure to chop in a random fashion. Another pro tip to get behind small areas like this. I'm going to dip into my reservoir and I'm going to use that to apply the epoxy. This really gives me control so I don't get anything on this back wall. I can also do that between these trivets and then I can just make sure they're nice and filled in. I'm gonna do the same thing on this front edge. And that's your tool tip of the day. Okay, after chopping the top to get rid of the trowel marks and to remix that epoxy, use a torch. Your propane torch works best. Cross the surface like you're mowing the lawn, a couple inches from the surface. Yes. Oh my gosh, so incredible. <laughs> That's even better. Yeah. Right here. Oh. Don't you like it? It's precious. It is. Yeah. Is that a turtle in there? Do you have a turtle in your countertop? All right, that dam is ready for our next coat. So I put the majority of the epoxy up there. You don't want it to roll off that edge, but we'll scoop the excess back into the bucket, but this allows me to get the right amount on really fast without having to fight it. So I got a lot of excess up here, so now I'm gonna mow the lawn. I don't over scrape it, but it's gonna find my excess and work it back towards this end so I could utilize it on this lower piece. And rarely do I go home from work just giddy and happy and like, Dude, it's been so fun working with you, man. Sure. I want to have you make a sample with all the stuff we got here, however you want, mm -hmm. with the stuff that you've learned. Nice. Is that cool? Yeah. All right, after the clear coat, we're just going to peel our masking. We'll come back tomorrow and do the lower masking, but anything that's touching the epoxy, peel it off now so it doesn't lock it in. Wow. Fantastic. What did you think about when you were doing your sample? Were you comfortable because of the process that you had learned or how'd that go for you? I was comfortable. But the funny thing about it was when we decided to do my sample, it was with what we had left over. Right. So everything was on the clock. Yeah. Was, you know, actually the clock had already started. It had <laughs> been sitting in that bucket for a while. Wow, that looks good, Gecko. You're not nervous. Only about a million people are gonna see that video, Gecko. You got this. Did we tell you we're streaming live currently? <laughs> <laughs> so you were under pressure. Yeah, and I made it aware that when we have the volume of the epoxy, it sets itself off. Yeah, you got to get it out of the bucket, it, yeah, right? You got to get it out of the bucket. So uh, under, under a little pressure like that, but again, the material it is so friendly. Holy cow. Gecko, my man. You did all. Look at this, Mitch. <laughs> nice. Good Great job, Gecko. Good you job. You did it. It's already on it, though. How long did that take you? Yeah, buddy. How long did that take you? Was that the whole whopping, what, five minutes? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> we got the clear coat done. We're ready to let this dry, brother. This is looking fantastic. It is outstanding. Good job. Good work. Luke. Behind the camera to on scene sanding, torching, gloves, grabbing stuff. You ran around like like a Hawaiian chicken, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the team. Yeah. <laughs> What'd you think, man? You've seen it behind the camera. How did you like working with the material? It's as easy as it looks, you know. When you watch it a thousand times, yeah. I didn't need to think, you just go do it. Nice. You know, yeah. It was fun. Mitch, so far, what's your favorite part of this whole project? My favorite part is a little hidden Honua. Yeah, that, that is really cool. I think the decal we got was awesome. Vinyl decals really can 
accentuate your project. You can customize it, right? Guys, we're about to go swim with some manta rays. What are your thoughts? If we're underwater, are we wet? Yeah. Are yes, I we're wet. Is the water wet? R.I.P. Steve, uh, Steve Irwin. Oh, uh, Wait, yes. that was a stingray. That was a stingray. Was. Oh. We'll be was good. Get this thing deep prepped. Okay guys, pro tip. Score where your tape meets the epoxy before you peel it to get really sharp lines. All right guys, how do you clean your buckets? You let the epoxy dry inside the bucket and then you can usually peel it out no problem. This is just one day later. It's best to wait about three days so it really kind of hardens in there. And then you can pull out the epoxy and you got a clean bucket. From sample, conceptualized color, to finished product, man. You nailed it, buddy. Good job, You're good job. Park, yeah. go Who court. found that color? Who presented that color first? It, was that you? No, it was actually the Martins. When we were talking about what they wanted to do, I was like, take your time. Yeah. Like, something's gonna jump out at you. It's just gonna go wow. Like yeah. That. And this was it. I agree. I mean, look at this kitchen, man. Yeah. We, I, I had so much fun working with you. I can't believe you're learning curve. You, you can tell that you've been in the trades, that you really love what you do, and uh, we want to present you with the coveted oh, You Got oh This God. Award, man. Oh, so hey. here you go. I'll put it on, brother. There you go. You got this, man. Good job. I'm honored. I'm honored, guys. <laughs> An another thing uh, with that, you're going to get uh, your two gallon kit, man. So we got you. Got you a two gallon oh kit. <laughs> and we got a business in a box here for you, man. Oh. No matter where you go, you can always grab these tools. These tools are not crazy expensive, high tech tools. They're DIY friendly. And this entire box has everything we used on this job. We're also gonna give you all the canvases that we use oh. uh, because they're expensive to put on the plane, not because we love you, okay? <laughs> <laughs> But uh, everything that we use is right there. All the additives that are left over are there. And then, um, yeah. no, I just, I can't wait to see what you create, brother. Yeah. Well, I, I think your, your potential, man, the sky's the limit well, for you. You're gonna see it soon. Cool, really soon. cool, <laughs> man. You have anything to say to people who are considering um, doing this as a contractor or a DIYer? What, what were your real thoughts, first time job? What's, what are your thoughts, man? This is real for your DIYers mm -hmm. because the result you can get with the product and this is what we came up with it's I'm 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 like without words that art project was a blast doing these counters was a blast all the places you told us to go snorkeling and yeah. kayaking <laughs> man thank you for that and I got to have a reason to come back and 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 hang with gecko again this well, was too yeah. much fun man <laughs> Bob Cheryl what do you think of your new space here I'm so excited. I mean, it's beautiful. It's that's all I can say. It's it's beautiful. It was. I didn't expect this, and what I got was more than I expected. You know, I could tell that you guys really are fond of Gecko. I could tell that you really love having him here, and I think it's so neat that we were all a part of this. and And I hope that I get to join the club of fast friends because I can't wait to come back and see you guys again. Well, you're part of our Ohana. Bob, Bob, what, what, thank you, thank you, man. I like that. Bob, what, what do you think, man? Well, I think you guys uh, rescued us from countertop 
purgatory. <laughs> <laughs> you and, heard it. <laughs> and we could not be happier. Seriously, oh, this has you. exceeded our expectations. Thank you. You guys are blessed, and, and this is heaven out here. So thanks for letting us be a part of it for a few days. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. All right, guys. Hey, visit us anytime at StoneCoatCountertops.com. Call anytime for free project support. And until next time from Stone Coat Countertops, you got this. They missed it, but you got it. <laughs> hey. Wow. It's Dad. Hey. <laughs> Look at my eyes. What are you doing here? How'd you get here? I'll show you what we just got here. All right. You see the kitchen. I've been telling you about this. What do you think? First impression. This is my favorite kitchen. I love this kitchen. It's gorgeous. But what I love the best about this kitchen is that it goes with this home so well. Right. It's like the most elegant, gorgeous home I've I probably have ever been. <laughs> this is so Gecko's beautiful. first job. He did this island and did these effects, and this is his first project. Oh my gosh. Right? Are you kidding? No, no. He so did, you guys, you are a good teacher, but he is an amazing this is amazing. So and we're I, in we're in Hawaii. Yes, we are. What are we gonna do next? We're gonna surf. <laughs> Here we go. You heard it. And I mean, think about how much these countertops would cost to get redone in granite. Yeah. The okay. demo alone. I mean, I, I guarantee you this in Hawaii with granite, this is probably a fifteen, twenty thousand dollar job and with a $2, granite. Two thousand dollar demo. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's minimum uh, in, in the states. This job all day long is twelve grand for granite. So yeah. it's got to be more here. I, I could imagine. You know, well, we don't have enough for it. You know, I mean, we can't just be, you know, extracting, extracting. Right. Yeah. You know? Right. You're right. I, I like the fact that this is a renewable product. Yeah. You're not cutting a mountain down. I mean, are you walking by the counter every day going? No. No, you're not. Yes. You don't care. Like, yes. you do that, like, yes. week one, yeah. week 18, you're doing dishes. <laughs> you know, you don't care anymore.